Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are covering all things Halloween. I'm starting by taking out our Halloween and Thanksgiving decoration baskets from my closet to see what I can put up. I typically like to have different decorations for Halloween and then for Thanksgiving, so I'm not putting out everything that I have for fall just yet. Essentially, if I have a Halloween decoration for a specific location in my house, then it will go up and I will wait to replace it with a Thanksgiving or fall decoration until after Halloween. But if the only decoration I have for a specific area is fall themed, then I will go ahead and put it up now. I'm starting by hanging our witches hats above our kitchen island. However, after filming, we finally bought and installed pendant lights and I needed to move these hats to above our dining room table. I like how they are still essentially centered over a rectangular object in our living space, but now I have to figure out how to decorate my pendant lights. I'm thinking I could string some spider webs on them or something like that. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Moving on, we are hanging our ghost witches down our hallway. If you watched my Halloween themed video last year, you may notice that I'm using a lot of the same decorations and most of the decorations are actually going in the same space. Because I'm not throwing a Halloween party, I will be reusing some of my decorations from last year, but in a different location in my house. I really hope this helps normalize the idea that you don't always need to go buy new things each year for each holiday. If anything, I think that repeating decorations over the years creates fun memories for the kids and helps the holidays feel a little bit more nostalgic. For example, I always looked forward to seeing the advent calendar that my mom used every year prior to Christmas. She didn't need to buy the latest and greatest one to make that time feel special. I know it can feel tempting to want to get lots of cool new decorations, but I think we need to remember that our children are likely not exposed to all of the new products on social media like we are, and really won't know what new decorations they might be missing out on. Growing up, my mom also used our school holiday crafts to decorate the house. Over the years, she collected more and more to fill up the space. It was always fun to see and look back at some of our old creations. And I hope to do the same thing with my kids. So even though some areas in our home may feel bare now, I have lots of years for my children to create pieces of art to fill those spaces. Anyways, that is the end of my little TED talk. I will go ahead and let you enjoy watching me decorate in peace. It's like I can't walk on the ceiling Oh yeah Got me dreaming Dreaming in colors I'm never dreaming Oh yeah I let you in deeper than I let anyone else before Fell in love with my broken pieces Took them all and made them yours Didn't know what my heart be needed Skipping out
We are going to finish up our decorating by adding a few pumpkins to Aubrey's room. And can we take a second to appreciate how adorable she was as a baby? Moving on, we are getting into our crafty segment of this video. Let's go ahead and start by making some homemade Play-Doh. This recipe is awesome. All you need is water, oil, flour, salt, and cream of tartar. I will show you the recipe card in just a bit. But essentially, all you have to do is mix all of these ingredients in a pot and cook over medium heat until the dough comes together. For a while, it will just feel kind of like you're mixing up soupy mashed potatoes, but then some clumps will start to form and before you know it, you will have your homemade Play-Doh. Once it has cooled down just a little bit, you knead the dough and store it in a container or a Ziploc bag. This Play-Doh is so soft and fun to play with. I made some months ago and it still is just as soft as the day I made it. You just have to be careful not to leave it out because it will harden if not stored properly, just like normal Play-Doh. If you want to color your dough, it is easiest if you mix the food coloring in with the water before mixing all of the ingredients together. I didn't do that in this case because I wanted to show you the natural color of the Play-Doh and because I will be splitting this dough in half to make two separate colored doughs. Today I will be taking half of the Play-Doh and coloring it orange for the homemade sensory bin which we will make right now. The only downside I can think of to this recipe is that I haven't been able to figure out how to get the vibrant colors that you get when purchasing Play-Doh from the store, but that won't stop me from making more in the future. So this white container is my designated sensory bin container that I got from Walmart for about $5. I picked up these pots in March from Dollar Tree because I knew that they would be perfect for something Halloween themed. And like I mentioned in a previous video, the Halloween items were really limited a few weeks ago when I went shopping and now all of the Christmas stuff is already out. I did go to CVS and snag this six count pack of sand putty for free because I had a coupon that was like $4 off your entire purchase and I just went in and purchased this. And then I thought I would throw in some of my spooky stamps for Aubrey to use in the Play-Doh or the sand putty. So let's talk about my sensory bin for a second, like the actual container. I really love how it has a lid that you can put off to the side as an additional play space. It kind of has little like edges too. And if I was made of money, I would buy a lot more of these because they are like the perfect size and they're stackable. They're just great. But because I want to make a lot of sensory bins, I just can't justify spending that much money on like a storage container 
that once the sensory bin stage in our life is kind of over, I really don't know like how I would use these containers if I had like let's say 10 of them. So I have a plan going forward that will utilize some larger containers that I've bought from Costco and they were much less expensive. I'm going to use those as storage and this will be just the designated container to play with the sensory items. So let me know in the comments if you want me to make a video breaking down how I stored and organized my sensory bin items. But now that this bin is complete, let's go ahead and give it to Aubrey to play with and have some fun. Look at that little monster. Oh, it's not adorable. <laughs> I'm picking this one. <laughs> look, look how cute. Look, how cute. Do you like the sensory bin? Oh. What do you want to do for my craft today? And I have something fun. Well, we made these little guys. It's for the pumpkin. A pumpkin and then we have something else a little baby and a little gift and they have this little guy <coughs> which one do you like the most I like this one well now since we are done with that we are gonna play with one of the races let me get the races I don't have them, but we have these. But we don't need the Halloween ones. We need Zuki ones. Oh, no matter. So, would you like to play with me? Then I have something better than those. These little ones are so cute. Oh, I want the pumpkin the most because look how soft it is. Mm. It's satisfying. Mm -hmm. Getting beans out of the Play-Doh, they come out pretty easy though. So as you saw, Aubrey loved her sensory bin and has used it many times since filming this video. But let's go ahead and move on to a fun craft that I saw on TikTok. I'm just using a canvas and some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree. My spackling was actually pretty old and dried out, but I just added a little bit of water and it became a nice consistency very quickly. With a spoon, or in my case, a wide popsicle stick, you just take the spackling and create little ghost shapes on a canvas. I repeated this many times until I covered the entire thing. If you don't want to do a gazillion ghosts, then you could just make one very large ghost in the center of the canvas, or maybe like a large one and two little ones on the side. I let my canvas dry for a day and then I took out my oil-based Sharpie marker and drew some eyes and a mouth on each ghost. I tried to create different mouths and eyes so that each ghost could have its own personality.
I really love how this turned out and I think it's really cute. I decided to place this in my bathroom and I returned my fall sign to its box since now I have a Halloween decoration to use in this space. Heart stop when you first saw me. We are going to finish up this video by making two fun Halloween treats. The first is this very simple jack-o'-lantern quesadilla. It's amazing how just a few cuts of a tortilla can really transform a meal. And lastly, we will be making chocolate pretzel spider webs and spiders. I originally thought I had white melting chocolate, but then I realized I only had blue melting chocolate on hand when I was ready to film this video. But I figured that the final product would probably look cute anyways, and that Aubrey and Jack wouldn't care if the color of the chocolate was blue or white. So I melted some of the chocolate according to the instructions, and because I wanted to save my piping bags for cake decorating, I decided to just use a little Ziploc bag to pipe this melting chocolate onto some pretzels. Before piping, I assembled seven to eight pretzel sticks to resemble the straight parts of a spider web. Then I used the melting chocolate to attach the sticks and complete the web look, kind of making little U shapes in between each stick. I noticed in my stash of sprinkles that I had some black crystal sprinkles and I thought these would be perfect to cover up some of the blue melting chocolate. I ended up having some melting chocolate left over, so I created one large dollop on my baking sheet and broke four pretzels in half and stuck them into the chocolate to resemble a spider. I took some more of my sprinkles and added them to the end of the spider to resemble the spider's eyes. I absolutely love how this turned out, and both of my kids really loved how it tasted. I'd like to thank you again for watching today's video and supporting my channel. If you are new here, I would love to invite you to subscribe and stick around, and stay tuned for all of my motherhood content. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and I will catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.